Is it technology based, basically? Or... It's kind of everything. I think there were no limits to our understanding and our technology. The, the one thing I would like to see is unlimited energy for everybody that needs it. Um, created in a, a clean way, say created, released, because you can't create energy. It's neither created nor destroyed. But um, produced in a way that uh, doesn't damage the planet but allows everybody to have as much power as they want. One, one of the biggest problems on our planet is, is it, it boils down essentially to access to energy. Because if you don't have energy, um, you don't have clean water, you don't have refrigerators, you have poor health. It, it, the best places in the world to live are the places that use most energy. The problem we have at the moment is, is releasing energy the way that we get it from fossil fuels or even from... from even from nuclear power has problems. The, our energy sources tend to have problems. And so I would like to see um, nuclear fusion power stations all over the planet, which are a clean and safe and effectively unlimited supply of energy. And I think we could do that. I think we could do that by the turn of the next century. I think the most significant event in my lifetime was landing on the moon, which was just after I was born. I was about one year old in 1969. And um, because I actually think that science and exploration are the same thing. So you can physically explore, you can literally go to the moon and go to another world. Or you can, you mentally explore different worlds. I mean, I'm a particle physicist, so I explore, you know, the the smallest building blocks of, of that. But I think intellectually it's the same. And it has the same importance because it expands our horizons. It expands our knowledge about the universe. And you can do that either physically or you can do it intellectually. Um, so I would say without doubt, landing on the moon is the most important thing. In my field of particle physics, um, it was very important to find out that these little particles called neutrinos that come streaming out of the sun, I mean, 60 billion per centimetre squared per second going through your body now from the sun, so 60 billion through your thumbnail every second. We found out that those things are not like light, they're not completely massless, they have mass, they're heavy things. Uh, that was really profound and might point us to a deeper understanding of, of nature. most significant thing we will discover in science in the next decade. If I was to guess, I would say it would come from the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, because that's, it's like Apollo. It's like, before we went to the moon, we didn't know what we'd find on the moon. Um, before we built the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, we didn't know what we'd find in the, in the subatomic world uh, that that massive machine can access, and it's just starting to run now. So. This decade, I would point to the LHC. I'll probably be wrong, because science is like that, and someone will just discover something absolutely tremendous somewhere else. I think social media, so sites like Twitter, have made a massive difference, actually, to the, to the communication of science, and they've clearly affected big issues. So the, the Simon Singh libel case is really interesting because the, an immense amount of pressure was brought to bear on, on, the, on the legal system and on the British Chiropractic Association by a, I was going to say organised group, but it wasn't really organised. The thing is that things happen so quickly on sites like Twitter that the, the organisation is kind of spontaneous. People just just back an idea and, and, and go with it and can apply huge amounts of pressure and they can organise meetings and they can organise public meetings and, and they, they, they lobby. So it's a way, I think, for, for, uh, it's a way for rational people in a way. I'm going to say that actually. It might be controversial but I'll say it. it's rational people can 
for once, for the first time, all come together and, and fight irrationality wherever it happens. And that, that can be in the legal system, it, it can be in the newspapers, but it can be in government as well, because there's a huge amount of irrational, irrational policy making in government. And I think that for the first time, and really importantly, um, the, the, the silent, rational um, people of Britain have got a way of organising themselves and applying pressure. And it's, and it's being noticed, and it can only be for the good. The best thing about being a scientist is genuinely that your job is to explore the unknown. It's genuinely your job. You're supposed to go, either physically or mentally, to a place that you don't understand and try and make sense of it. And that is a... I cannot think of a better job than that. In fact, it is a better job than being a pop star, without a doubt. Because being a pop star is kind of fun for a while, but it gets hard work and you just do the same thing over and over again. If you're a scientist, then you get to do an unlimited number of different things. And it's just essentially up to you what you do. So, scientist every time.